Hello. We're here with the Harwich Conservation Trust with Michael Locke and Tyler Maycat for uh, their monthly update. And very excited to hear about uh, all kinds of things that have been going on since the last time we met, uh, including the tornado cleanup continuing mm -hmm. and a few yeah. other items that I know you want to talk about. So Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us and thank um, the rest of the staff, um, uh, Jamie and Caleb uh, here at team with a community resource. We're, we're really glad to be here. Um, yes. And, yeah, and uh, uh, there's been continued trail cleanup at a variety of conservation destinations mm -hmm. around town. Tyler's really been leading that effort with a, a very dedicated group of volunteers. Yeah. Um, so he's going to give us an update from that tornado, um, the, tor the tornado impacts. Yeah, so... Um, as people know, the impacts were varied around town, and depending on where you live, some people had lots of damage, and others had relatively few or none. Um, we were so fortunate, of course, that no one was killed or uh, severely injured, to my knowledge, anyways. Um, but some of the conservation properties did suffer a lot of damage. Uh, so, as folks know, Harwich Center had a lot of damage. Um, and the Island Pond area in particular, there was a tremendous amount of tree damage um, to my eye. It does look like a tornado touched down there, so um, there's a shot of me doing some chainsaw work. Um, so uh, myself and a variety of different volunteers from all different ages um, have been coming out and doing work with me out there um, at Island Pond. There's a good shot of the group from a couple weeks ago. Um, so many of the trees that are down, that were down on the trail have been cleared at this point. Uh, there were probably about mm, 20 or, or 30 <laughs> mm. that we had to clear. So there was a lot of work to do. That's an example of what we were looking at, all kinds of stuff like that. Mm. I wanted to ask, uh, I, I imagine there were hangers as we come to talk about them in the past yes. month. Lots of hangers, and I'm wondering, were there many uh, hanging branches that you needed to get up to and were difficult to reach in that area? Yeah, so uh, there, there are still many hangers um, on some trails. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would ask that people exercise a lot of caution if they're gonna go hiking, mm -hmm. probably don't do it when the winds are over 15 miles an hour. Cause 15 th miles, yeah, yes. Because okay. things could be falling. Um, right. So just be aware that's, of your surroundings. Yep. Uh, however, uh, Amy Uzowski and I connected with um, a v veterans group, Team Rubicon. They do disaster relief all around the country. Um, they're wonderful people. Um, they were here immediately following the tornado, mm -hmm. um, doing cleanup in some private residences. Um, so they have some pretty skilled sawyers. Um, you know, people who operate mm -hmm. chainsaws. Mm -hmm. They will be coming at some point this fall to help us out with cutting some of the more dangerous trees that are hanging over trails. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, you can see the work is ongoing on all the main streets, too. I mean, wherever mm -hmm. you drive still, they're working hard, and it looks like it's going to be a while yet before they have it all done. Yeah. Mm. If ever, of course. It well, could be just some of it will take care of itself. It'll get done. Yeah. Right. Eventually. But yeah, that's a lot of work, and it's great that you've gotten volunteers and also the team Rubicon mm -hmm. yeah. to help out. Wonderful. At the same time, all that's been going on. We've been getting Cornelius Pond Woodlands ready to open to the public, so that should be happening very soon. Mm. And how did that fare? Did that need extra grooming because of the tornado as well? Yes, it did. It did, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were poised to actually open it, and then the tornado yeah. touched down, and then we had to pause. Right. while we address the issues, yeah. Right, right. yeah. Mm. Well, good, but you're getting on it, as always. That's terrific, mm. yeah. with help. And do you still need volunteers? Should we be asking people for Yes, I, I always need volunteers. Okay. Uh, we're pretty much done with the Island Pond and Hacker Wildlife Sanctuary work at this point, but we'll be moving on to some more uh, regularly scheduled trail maintenance mm -hmm. kind of things mm -hmm. at Coysbrook Woodlands and uh, Cold Brook Preserve. Oh, yeah, okay. any interested folks could visit our website, harwichconservationtrust.org, and there's a volunteer tab they could click okay. to submit a volunteer interest survey. Excellent. And that'll uh, come right to us and we'll set up a meeting. Then you get yeah. together with them and mm -hmm. figure yeah. out how mm -hmm. they can help. Right, exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Okay.
And so, speaking of volunteerism, we have our annual um, right. Coast Sweep Beach Cleanup oh, event yes. coming up in that's September. That's always a great day. So that's a great group volunteer activity that's yeah. in the morning. And, and the date on that is September 21st, Tyler? Yep. So uh, Coast Sweep this year is going to be September 21st. Um, and so check-in will be at 930 uh, right here at the Community Center. A mm -hmm. um, little bit more details will be forthcoming, but save the date. Um, it'll be 930 to about 11.30, so... Um, and can you just say quickly which areas, which beaches you'll be at? Um, yeah, every public beach in town. Okay. Um, town landings. Uh, mm -hmm. We go to Bell's Neck also. Mm -hmm. Coast Sweep is a program that is coordinated by the Massachusetts uh, Coastal Zone Management Office. Um, it's part of an international ocean cleanup. Mm -hmm. um, organized by the Ocean Conservancy. Uh, so we are just doing our small part here in Harwich uh, this year. Um, there are a group of AmeriCorps alumni from AmeriCorps Cape Cod mm -hmm. who will be coming that day also, um, and they'll be dispersing throughout the mid and lower Cape to clean up some other beaches also. So I was particularly interested, do you do Pleasant Bay or do they have their own um, Pleasant Bay Association? Maybe they do their own thing there. Do you do you do the coastal sweep on Pleasant Bay anywhere? Because there are there is some Harwich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, um, Harwich coastline there. Yeah, very little. Um, mm -hmm. But we could send people down into mm -hmm. Chatham to the to the boat landing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. I see. Okay, sure. okay, just curious. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. a fun event. It's a very fun. It is. Event. It is. Yeah, we've done some of those cleanups in the past. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tangible results. You mm -hmm. can really see how it makes a difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. do you do the weighing, the weighing of the stuff? Uh, we, do, we don't weigh it, but okay. when people collect their litter, they actually categorize it on a form that mm -hmm. the state gives right. us. Right. And all that data um, is compiled throughout the yeah. world, and you can see what kind of litter impacts are happening around the world on beaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that has an overall impact. It's great. Yeah, it's a great uh, partnership event with uh, not only the town conservation department, but mm -hmm. the town harbor master's office and the town mm -hmm. highway department. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. And okay. the state. And the state. So again, yeah. people register through your website. Yeah, okay. harborwoodconservationtrust.org. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, they can also maybe just show up, or would they be best to register ahead of time? Yeah, welcomes are welcome. Yep. Okay. There'll okay. be plenty of supplies, mm -hmm. and uh, All right. we'll get those beaches really clean. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, it benefits everybody, obviously. Yes, right. it does. Near yeah. and far. Sure. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and, and so we have a new land preservation project. I heard about that. Yes. Tell us, tell yes. us about uh, it, please. It's very exciting. So um, the Coysbrook Woodlands is uh, a, uh, you'll see a map soon of that site. There it is. Mm -hmm. In green is the mm -hmm. area that has been preserved. Starting in, in 1997, mm -hmm. there was the first 16 acre area comprised of 11 lots that was acquired uh, through the trust's first fundraising uh, campaign ever for a land saving project. So donors uh, from across town and beyond um, came together to support that first 16 acre acquisition which really became the core of this growing um, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Then there were land donations to the north and then a couple more lots bought uh, to the south in the mid 2000s. And then there was this last lot, that one in red you saw on the map, which is actually on your right of your screen in this beautiful um, panoramic uh, photo uh, taken by... That's a gorgeous picture. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, taken by our volunteer photographer, Gus Romano. Um, and it's that last lot that's been out there, the last piece of the puzzle for the Coysbrook Woodlands um, Preserve. Uh, that's a, a view of the Coysbrook Woodlands uh, surrounding uh, near, near the lot. Uh, it's a beautiful trail system. You can walk through tall pines and oaks. You then open up into a, a sweeping marsh vista that extends out to the Herring River Marsh area. Mm -hmm. And it's named after Coy's Brook because Coy's Brook is, flows right by the area and it's the main tributary to the Herring River, which mm -hmm. we also know is a significant alewife uh, river herring spawning migra mm -hmm. migratory route. There are mm -hmm. cattails that you, that you see here in the marsh right, right off oh. the the lot short is yeah isn't it amazing he took all these on site that's a marsh friend which yeah. is kind of neat um, it's a, a localized populations um, along coastal areas in the state not many of them but not rare either 
but it just underscores the need to protect their habitat. They build their domed nests in the brackish marsh mm -hmm. area in the cattails, um, mm -hmm. maybe you know three or four, three or four or more feet above the high water mark. That was butterfly weed you just saw a moment before, and there's actually a monarch oh, yeah. caterpillar in there, oh. because monarch caterpillars depend on milkweed alone for really? their sustenance. Really? Butterfly weed is a member of the milkweed family. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was a fiddler crab. They're also there, right there along the shoreline, uh, making their burrows. That was a male fiddler crab you saw with an enlarged claw. Uh -huh. So uh, it was amazing that uh, Gus took all these photos right there on site, this one acre lot. Yeah. So diverse. It's packed in. Full it's of yeah, life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wildlife excellent. variety and uh, wonderful. So many different it things. It is, yeah. isn't it? It's excellent. And it also, yeah. preservation of that lot will help protect mm -hmm. the visitor experience to the trail system. So, right. so you have established trails in that area. Yes. So yes. Well, right. So yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful right. area. And um, so we're hoping to raise 180000 by December 31st. Okay. So folks can um, give right. us a call. Or, the or challenge is on. Website. That's yeah. right. That's right. And so. I know people have been generous in the past, so hopefully that will not be too hard to reach. Yes. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's sort of, again, that last lot puzzle piece. Yeah. Yes. So stay tuned. Fabulous. Thanks for having us on. Well, thank you so much for coming in. This was mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tanya. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Dinah Lane from Harwich Channel 18. Thanks so much.